Hello, everyone. I'm Yvonne Perry, and we're back to We Are One in Spirit podcast with a new guest today. My friend Amy Odom is here to join us, and we really don't know what we're going to be talking about today, but I'm going to let her introduce herself, and we'll just go wherever spirit leads us. Welcome to the show, Amy. Well, thank you so much for having me, Yvonne. I feel so excited to be here. Um, so again, my, my name is Amy Odom, and Yvonne, I'm on a mission. I've been on a mission to inspire people to really tap into the uniqueness of you, of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I want to inspire people because we all have this beautiful, bright light within and to let it shine and mm -hmm. be the beacon of light for other people. So I'm, yeah, so I really just want to integrate, help people integrate that, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so I'm really excited. To so do you offer client sessions or are you doing classes? How, how do you offer these so services? Right now, it's still um, in the infancy and building, um, but I'm on social media. I post every day uh, something inspirational. I have a website. I do blogs. Mm -hmm. um, and then every week, whoever's on my uh, weekly news uh, letter, I write emails. And I love to laugh. So they're very inspirational, <laughs> funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to inspire people. And then uh, next month, uh, my team and I, we've been working on a uh, moon ritual uh, course, uh, The Secrets to Manifestation, because mm. I've had a lot of amazing things happen uh, through using the moon's energy. And um, I like my house, I've gotten my house by just calling forth what I wanted on a new moon. Mm. And like with a full moon, I've asked like for people not to be no longer in my life that are not in alignment and people have just mm. disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but it's amazing how that happens, right? Yes, really. And a lot of people are having people disappear, disappear from their lives that they really didn't expect that would just go. But this is a time of really, mm -hmm. I won't say drawing the lines because that just sounds too separatist, but it's more like aligning with those who are a vibrational match for you that yes. you feel like will support you and you can support them on your journey uh, in the oneness, in the wholeness. So yeah, yes. I think that's kind of where we're at. It's not that we intend to lose people, although sometimes right. that is a good choice, right? Right, right. But it's just like calling for like whoever is not in alignment because you could have toxic people in your life, but then you're not really aware of it. So yeah. yeah. But then an opportunity arises for you to see their true colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you have a decision point, I think, you know. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, so I'm excited for the program to come out and uh, help people use these simple rituals uh, to tap in. And when do you expect this program to come out? Uh, my goal is to have it out before the solstice. So before okay. June 20, around you're, June you're 20th. Right on it so, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, today we have the full blood moon, and I know that's bringing in a lot of energy for a lot of people. We had our intercessors call this morning, and it was just really, really strong for change, a strong moving forward into our mission. So I'm sure that you can capture some of that energy to bring into what you're about to offer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you know, when I speak of like being in the uniqueness of you, you know, like, what does that look like? And to mm -hmm. me, it looks like somebody standing in their personal power. Mm -hmm. It's uh, somebody who is in alignment with themselves and follows their intuition, their inner guidance. Mm -hmm. um, it's somebody who's clear on who they are, you know, um, clear on what you want, because mm -hmm. we can go through our whole lives, not even asking, like, who are we? Who do we want to be? How do we want to show up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and and to step into your uniqueness, it, uh, how I see it, it's like somebody living really in uh, a fulfilled life, you know, living life to the fulfillment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. The authenticity does bring a lot of fulfillment and happiness. Um, I was just talking with a, a family member over the weekend and there's, they were saying, you just seem so much happier than you have been in a long time. I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm living in my fullness. I feel more authentic in my expression less apologetic for who i yes. am you know yes less of a people pleaser and at the same time some really strong uh good relationships the ones that i have are very deep now versus mm -hmm. to having a whole lot of them they're just deeper 
Yes, which is so beautiful. Yeah, that's superficial. There's, yeah, exactly. there's, yeah, you don't really get anything from it. So I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this manifestation thing that you're talking about. You, you got your house through some principles that you're going to be teaching and applying through your course. Can you kind of share a little bit yeah. about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, when you have a new, uh, new moon, it's all about new beginnings. So mm-hmm. if you want something, you tap into that energy and connect with it and you write it down in a journal. And so like with the new moon, like you keep that, like with me, I put it under a rose quartz, okay. um, but for say for like a full moon, it's more of like, um, uh, wrapping things up uh, to me, it's like wrapping up a soul contract or okay. wrapping up, um, you know, endings of something that needs to go by the yeah. wayside. So whatever you want, write it out at that time, you can shred it or you can burn it and like watch it go up into the heavens. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. uh, that's, so stuff like that. So simple rituals that everyday mm-hmm. people can use mm-hmm. and tap into. What do you feel like is the importance of rituals? It, what what do they mean? Are they like markers for an event or what, what's the power of ritual? Oh, the, let's see, the power of ritual. Well, to me, a ritual is a sacred place mm-hmm. to connect and be with yourself. So um, a ritual to me is setting, you know, setting a time, self-care, Mm-hmm. being with yourself and connecting mm-hmm. to me that's a ritual so like you could have daily rituals of like gratitude or oh, daily yeah. rituals of going to the gym and um I look at them as rituals some people look at them as uh like I don't know something I have to do or whatever mm-hmm. I prefer the word ritual if that makes mm-hmm. any sense <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, and I think ritual has a, a feeling of celebration rather than a have to mm-hmm. or an absolutely mm-hmm. duty obligation it's more like I get to yeah yeah absolutely so yeah. ritual can be practiced then a, a good habit or a good practice yeah absolutely yes yeah like I for gratitude I do a daily gratitude ritual and it's a beautiful practice it's uplifting it like set you up for success every day right yeah which that's a beautiful ritual but some people do call it practice yeah well, and then there's there's ritual in ceremony, which I have found extremely powerful, like what you're talking about, writing things down and then maybe setting up your grid or your altar, candles, pretty things that you feel comfortable yeah. with, your stones, and really making it an important milestone or an event that you will remember, like a marker on the timeline. Oh, that day I did that. And then you can kind of look back on that and see how the magic unfolded as a result of the intentions you set that day. As mm-hmm. the, you, you've got your list, whether you, you scrapped it or burned it, you still remember, oh, I asked for that. Look, I've got it. Oh, wow. Yes. And then you kind of get more confidence, I think, in the ritual itself, in the, the ceremony of calling yourself into alignment and calling in your guides and saying, Hey, let's talk about creating this. Let's, you know, let, let's set the intention to bring this in. So it gives you that confidence. Yeah. It sounds like you're well versed in in things like that. Yeah. So I've been doing it for about, I think seven years and uh, magical things have occurred. Let me tell you. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Do you want to share some of those things? Uh, yeah. So like I said, um, house, uh, people who are not in alignment. Um, but also like one time in my life, I was looking for connection and I love how the universe works. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for connection. I was feeling lost in my life. I got the opportunity to fly to Africa. And so I got to go to Africa. And at that moment, it was this huge spiritual awakening that happened. Mm -hmm. And I got to connect to a traditional Maasai um, in Kenya. And it was beautiful. And it wasn't just, it was a soul connection. We had multiple past lives, but it's just amazing how it works. Like I was calling forth connection and it's just weird that I went all across the world to Mm -hmm. then find this connection. And it's just been beautiful. We've been fast friends ever since. So yeah, so that's another prime gorgeous example of it yeah yeah so you were able then to link back the synchronicities that the connections that unfolded as a result of your asking in that sacred environment 
and then it was like just wait and it unfolds you didn't have to really work at it is what I'm saying it's just kind of yeah you set the intention and it's to me I like forgetting about it because then you're not constantly thinking about it and then if you're thinking about it it's like the energy can shift right so it's like whatever is meant to be is meant to be and then just allowing that and just being in that feminine energy of allowing right yeah Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and when, when we do c- ceremony, I think it's very important that we come to it with gratefulness, positivity, confidence, rather than begging, whining, or demanding. You know, I've seen rituals work both ways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, some of them were called prayer meetings <laughs> in my past life, where it was very uh, taking things into your own hand and almost commanding that God do this, this, and this. And here's my timeline, and I want it done this way. But that's not the way we do ritual. That's uh, that's an old paradigm of control and manipulation. We're releasing all that now and moving into this softer, more feminine flow where we make our requests known and we just sit back and enjoy the communion, the intimacy that we have with source. And the next thing you know, oh, yeah, thanks. I asked for that like three months ago, and now it's here, and I've forgotten about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's the beautiful thing about feminine energy you just let it let it flow let it evolve and then it magically appears yeah. yes <laughs> mm. so are you doing anything for this um, particular uh, blood moon that we're in i know that a lot of people have said there's a significance to this i've just wondered if you had anything lined up or planned you know, I'll be tapping in uh, later on to my with myself, but um, the beautiful thing about this, I love that we're having this on the eclipse. I didn't realize it was on the eclipse, mm-hmm. and um, full moon is about culmination. It's about, you know, putting your seed with the fruits of your labor with the new moon, and then here we are, right? Mm-hmm. So X mm-hmm. amount of months ago, I'm calling for the community. I'm calling for beautiful people, and um, I just love the culmination of it all today. I'm here with you. I just got one of my articles published in a magazine that hit last night. So it's just like the culmination. So I'm to me today, I'm just celebrating. Yeah. I just feel really grateful. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And it worked yeah. out perfect because I had somehow when I was setting up this up today's podcast and the intercessors meeting this morning. This is usually something I do on the third Wednesday and how I skipped last week. I don't know. And when I was talking with with a friend um, that helps me prepare these meetings, she was like, oh, but it's in perfect timing because you do realize this is the blood moon. I'm like, no, I skipped that. I completely did not realize that. So it was all in divine order. And that's another one of those synchronicities when you just let it go and you do the best you can. And you thought you made a mistake and it was like, no, it wasn't a mistake at all. Just because you missed your programmed schedule, you actually linked in to a more appropriate timing Mm -hmm. for all of this to occur. And the energies had to line up and maybe they weren't ready last Wednesday, but they were today. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so I feel blessed. Yeah, I did not know today was the day of this. So uh, when I realized it on Monday, I was like, "Well, how cool is this?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So every day, something to celebrate and be grateful for every day. Absolutely. Yes, because gratitude. Speaking of gratitude, I love gratitude, and it's such a simple ritual or practice that you can do, and it really it makes your vibration higher. And Mm -hmm. when you're in gratitude, you know, you are uh, no longer can suffer. When you're in gratitude, you can't get angry. You know what I'm saying? And it just blows me away. And I, so that's one of the things I love to teach is gratitude. And it's not that I'm teaching it. I think everybody knows about it, but just making it a a habit, Mm -hmm. you know? Living it. And so not only are you sharing it in your teachings, you're living it by example. People pick up, oh, well, Amy's a very grateful, happy, uplifting person. And look at all that she's creating and manifesting. And I think that that surely people can see a correlation there. Yeah. Some of the most miserable people I think in the world are those who don't have that gratitude and and they're complaining and nothing's ever right. The glass is always half full, uh, half Mm -hmm. empty. Um, So, what, what do you think? Is, is that an energetic thing? 
uh, or is it something that we can cultivate by practicing it even when we don't feel like it? Yeah, you know, I'm a firm believer, especially like on mindset. I'm very practical in my spiritual uh, teachings. It's all about mindset because we have the choice. Like when people get stuck in that negativeness, right. they're right. choosing to be in that negative mm -hmm. mindset. Do you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? So we have a choice. And I love teaching change your expectations for appreciation. So when you're expecting somebody to do something, you know, that's a negative output. But when you appreciate, say, somebody like your husband or your wife to take out the trash, then it changes it. You're, you know, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's all a choice. And that's another thing I love to teach because our minds are like these vast computers mm -hmm. and we only use such a small percentage of them. Right. And when we can shift our mindset and one of the things is gratitude. Yeah. That in itself is just going to align you. And then mm -hmm. grace flows in so much louder. Like you could hear it more. Mm -hmm. Versus if you're negative, you could barely hear it. You're like, what did it say? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Or, and, and I think it, it becomes a habit too. The more you practice gratitude, the easier it becomes, the more natural, the more it just flows. And the same is true if you're a negative person, you can kind of get stuck in that cycle. To where that it's hard to break out of that yeah absolutely absolutely and speaking of gratitude with our bodies like you know what blows me away um and i just came across this a couple years ago i think you know we're gifted with these beautiful bodies and and they're imperfectly perfect i mean mine is <laughs> we all are right but to have that gratitude because mm -hmm. like our hearts our mm -hmm. heart beats 24 hours a day seven days a week wow. and doesn't stop right? Isn't that amazing. It's, it is amazing. I mean, it blows me away. So just having that gratitude every day, something simple, but it's really not that it's very intricate, but I think we take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. We don't realize how important it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. So it feels like things on an overall, maybe a collective that things are loosening and lightening up a little bit. Is is I'm perceiving that. I'm wondering how, how are you viewing the external world? <laughs> yeah, I feel like things are shifting. I mean, especially in the last couple of months, just with the COVID lifting, you could feel the energy shift. You could feel more of like an excitement, more of like, oh, uh -huh. here we go back in the fast lane, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I really noticed people, you know, are starting to look within, which I think is beautiful. And all around the world, I have people all around the world can contacting me and I think it's so beautiful that instead of now looking outside of yourself let's look within mm -hmm. you know and that's the key just to look within and have that self-love and then mm -hmm. you vibrate on a different frequency yeah it, do, I think this lockdown thing that we all went through had some valuable lessons for us mm -hmm. that we maybe wouldn't have learned had we not been forced to slow down and one of those gifts, I think, is going within, really looking at your life and going, what's working, what's not, um, where am I spending my time, where am I spending my energy, uh, I, oh, I have so much to be grateful for that I didn't realize before mm -hmm. until there was a threat that it might not be there, whether it's gas or food or, or electricity or heat or, you know, once that, that threat became closer to home, I think it's like we began to appreciate what we already had rather than taking it for granted yes absolutely yeah and i love the slow down we slowed down for years it's such a fast pace and i kept saying like oh my gosh when are we going to slow down right and yeah. it felt so good just to be at home mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. of course you get a little antsy but it just you know <laughs> just to really take it easy and i really feel like my body has slowed down which is beautiful i feel like I was able to stop and smell the roses and um, watch a bird fly by, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> such, yeah. such a beautiful thing. You, you notice things that you didn't notice before. Yeah. yeah. But it's, then there are other people who seem to have had the opposite um, reaction to where that they were very disgruntled that they had to slow down and they've experienced some really rough hardships with loss of jobs, loss of a place to live, um, you know, just mm -hmm. some really hard things like that. So I just, I wonder how much our attitude, our joy, our gratitude, does that really affect the way life 
reflects back to us? Oh, absolutely. I'm a firm believer that the words you speak do create the story of your life. The thoughts we think create the story of your life. I mean, we are all energetic beings. We're these vast beings and we're like an antenna. We're constantly vibrating right. what we're thinking, what we're saying. So, um, you know, for a vocabulary, for example, if you say, well, my life is good, I'm good. Well, you're saying that to the universe. The universe is going to give that back. But if you say my life is extraordinary, mm -hmm. I feel extraordinary, magnificent, whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to get that back, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I love it. That Yeah, it's like, how much better can it get? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but you could say the opposite. And then it's like, what well, universe is going, um, hello, do you really want us to show you that? Oh, yeah. you want us to show you how much better it can get? Okay, here you go. Gift, 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 blessing, blessing, synchronicity. This falls into place. But if you're saying, well, I don't know how much worse it can get, you know, trouble comes in threes and all those kind of negative thoughts. Um, mm. Is that what you really want to draw to yourself? Right. Yeah. And to, for people to be conscious of that, I don't think mm. people are conscious of it. I don't think they are either. Yeah. I really don't think yeah. that we get in such a habit, even with our speech, that we don't realize what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's part of the slowdown too, is to just stop and observe, you know, how am I treating myself? What's coming out of my mouth? What do mm -hmm. I really believe? And how are those beliefs, thoughts, and actions taking a toll or having an influence on what I'm experiencing in the world? Yeah. And you know what I did is I got a list of uh, different vocabulary. Uh, we get stuck in that pattern of the same words all the time. And that's not, I mean, you're going to keep saying it. That's what you're going to get. So, you know, Google some really extraordinary, magnificent words, you know, something that's going to be more of an uplifting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it does, it takes practice. It takes time to really then get that in your body. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes just a habit. Yeah, I think the body has to have a time to integrate your new vocabulary, your new thoughts, your new beliefs, so that it starts trusting you and believing you that, okay, are you going to keep doing this positive thing or are we going back? It's almost like it, it kind of waits to say, is this for real or, or do you mean it? Because the body obeys pretty much whatever we're feeling, not, not just what we're saying, but also what we're feeling. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So sometimes, you know, when you're feeling depressed, it's like you cannot pull yourself up by your bootstraps because you're not feeling it and the body's going, oh, we're feeling yeah. depressed. Okay, I guess that's where we're at today. <laughs> and right. then you may come in, in contact with somebody else who's very uplifting and all of a sudden the depression's gone because the body felt that vibration yeah. from the other person and it began to create its own uh, new force field. It's not own new, oh yeah, I can do that. It's own yeah. belief system. It's confidence <laughs> comes back in its own healing. You know, these bodies are amazing and how connected mm -hmm. they are to everything. The holistic concept of how it all works together. When you treat one thing, it affects, you know, all the components, whether it's spiritual or mental, emotional or physical, what have you. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, to, to ground yourself into Mother Earth. You know, speaking of bodies, it's like people are so out of their bodies all the time mm -hmm. and they're unconscious. They're walking through life, letting social media, um, uh, family, friends dictate them. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an energetic healer. I'm sure you see this. I see a lot of people out of their bodies. Mm -hmm. And so it's like teaching them how to ground that energy, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. when you are in your sacred vessel, you really then are experiencing life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is your favorite way of, of grounding and centering do you, do you want to lead us through something like that just so that maybe if there's someone listening who has no clue how yeah do it's my, how do I so, get my body <laughs> yeah it's so simple you're going to be blown away okay let's do it <laughs> so all I do is I drop my mind into my heart some people are like I can't you know how do I do that you mm -hmm. can think of an animal you could think of something you love when you think of something that just, you know, that you just absolutely love, you automatically drop into that space. Okay. Right? Okay. So just drop into your heart. Um, I always connect with my higher self. So I always say, higher self, please bring forth or please come forth into my body and or so now. I call forth my angels. Angels be with me. Surround me with the divine white light of love and protection. 
you can call forth your galactic family mm -hmm. you can call forth the divine mother so whoever you you know whoever is aligned with you and then all you do is i picture roots for my base chakra going all the way down to the heart of mother earth i said now i ground my energy into the heart of mother earth where i am protected i am safe mm -hmm. and it's like i could feel the roots going all the way down and mm -hmm. then at one point it locks right mm -hmm. and the more you do it the more you're going to feel it at mm -hmm. first, I didn't feel anything. I was like, am I supposed to feel something, right? But yeah, yeah, it just takes time. But it's that simple. You can do it right when you wake up. Mm -hmm. It takes a minute. Mm -hmm. And then you're set for the day. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and then if you get into a situation where you're feeling like, oh, I just came unhinged, <laughs> you, you can go back into that centeredness just as easily. And it does come easier with practice. I'm, I'm sure you've been doing this for years, as I have. And so it's more um, natural for us to drop into that than maybe some, mm -hmm. but I think we're gonna have a lot of new people coming into this practice of really understanding what it is to connect with the body and connect with source and connect with the earth um, mm -hmm. that have been so busy out there doing all their stuff. <laughs> and then when all that stuff is stripped away, it's like, okay, what's left? Oh. Yeah. Oh, the treasure within, that's what's left. And that was the greatest treasure to begin with. Now is the opportunity to really um, connect with that and to be in love with that twin flame within you. I think a lot of people say twin flame, twin flame, as another person that they connect with. And there is sure a beauty in being able to connect with another person in an intimate level. But there, this, what you're talking about and what I'm sensing and feeling is a connection with yourself. It is yes. that sacred dance of source and spirit and body, uh, the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the electro, mm -hmm. the magnetic, the heavens, the earth, all of it being uh, tangible, almost yes. tangible when you feel it, when you step into that moment where you really feel all of that and know that that's you. Yes, and I love talking about masculine and feminine energy. Yeah, that's like one of my hot topics. Yes, so we all have this our own unique blend of masculine and feminine energy, and I'm not talking gender. I'm talking mm -hmm. just energy, just swirling within you. Mm -hmm. And I want to teach people we can tap into that at any point of our lives or any time of our lives, right? And so I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was raised, I was raised on job. Uh, construction sites, hung out with men, was around men, I was treated like a boy. So I had a lot of masculine energy. But as I was coming into my, my late 20s, I was, my true essence is feminine. So I was trying to tap into my feminine. It was very awkward because it's not where I reside, right? It's not like where I've been living. Mm -hmm. And then I fully got into my feminine energy and I was swimming in. I was like, everything's so magical. Everything's just going to magically happen. And a lot of things did, but then I wanted to build a business and I was just sitting in my feminine energy. You know, you could just sit and create, but there was not a lot of movement. Mm. And that's where the masculine energy comes. Mm. So I brought that forth back. And now I have this beautiful blend where I could just, you know, kind of like, fluidly move in between the two mm -hmm. i create with my feminine i do with my masculine do you see mm -hmm. what i'm saying I love it uh, mm -hmm. yeah and so we all have that within us mm -hmm. but then it also then leads to like relationships right mm -hmm. um to find that yin yang uh, within another partner um mm -hmm. So do we still have time? I can talk about that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so like with relationships, I'll give you an example of mine. When I met my ex, I was in my masculine. His true essence is feminine. And so we, we danced like that for many years and it worked until I started trying to get into my feminine. Mm -hmm. And then we started clashing because we got depolarized, right? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so we're now no longer together and that's okay. But with my true essence as being feminine, I do want to call forth a masculine person, mm -hmm. their true essence. Mm -hmm. um, and then with day-to-day -day people, a lot of women take over like, you know, households, careers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Their true essence might be feminine, but they're taking on a more masculine role. And Out I've of noticed, necessity. yeah. 
Ah, and so their significant other in them become depolarized mm. if, you know, say the male is masculine. So mm. I love stuff like this. It's so fascinating to me to see that in a different mm. light of relationships and within yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's, it's like we have both of those components within us, but do, what is needed in each moment? Does this creative, relaxed flow need to show up at this moment? Or do I need to make decisions and move forward, take action, set a boundary, um, whatever. And so being able to call upon that, either one, I think that is part of that sacred dance that we're talking about, where you've integrated yeah. the masculine and the feminine, and you're able to access whichever one is the most, is the best fit for the job, for whatever is at hand you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the thing is, we all have this unique blend within us. And so it's like, ooh, everybody can tap into this, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. yeah. So and, and it may I'm be more fun. Like that. you said, you were more inclined at one period in your life to feel masculine and then in another one to feel feminine. And then now it's more like, okay, what do I need right now? Yeah. Let me move into that. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me just step into that. And I think that's the beautiful part of our multi-dimensional multi-faceted expression of personality is being able to discern what we need to do and do, do or not do okay in any yes. moment and, and to just allow that it's kind of like driving a car you know when to push the gas and you know when to push the brake and you know when to do the clutch and it's like <laughs> okay <laughs> do i do both do i do neither do i one pedal two pedals but you learn that synchronicity within your own self to know mm -hmm. how to present the best solution or the best uh, expression of who you are in any given moment. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Anything else you want to share? This is fun. <laughs> I know. I'm having such a good time. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's, I feel, I feel good. I feel like we okay. got to, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. <laughs> wow. Well, that's wonderful. I really appreciate everything that you said today and shared and just sharing our hearts. And it's so good sometimes just to hear somebody else say, they got it. They got it. And it's, I got it. You got it. And it's fun to flow like that and, and to truly have that kinship and that, uh, that intimacy with self and share that with yeah. another person. That, that's beautiful. Yeah, Amy. Thank, thank you. you so much for being who you are and expressing that with such grace and ease. Oh, thank you, Vaughn. I really appreciate you having me. That was a lot of fun. Let's do it again. No. Let's do. I loved it. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you.